Hello, and welcome to the third episode of the Captain's Lifestyle Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Morgan. Here with me, I have the real Captain Morgan, as well as my beautiful wife, Martha. We have another special guest on today's episode. He is an ACE certified personal trainer. He has his CrossFit Level 1 certification as well as the gymnastics specialty course. He has a degree in biology and is a bartender extraordinaire. But on top of all of that, he is my wonderful roommate. Please give a warm welcome to Nader Gattas. All right. Hey. All right. Settle down. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Welcome Thanks. on the show, on the Captain's Lifestyle. Mm. So, what did we just finish doing? <laughs> we just did 19.5. And how was One that? of the nastiest things I've ever done. Yeah. It was good. Like, yeah. mental for sure. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, <sighs> 19.5 is the last CrossFit open workout which is 33, 27, 21, 15, and 9 repetitions of thrusters at 95 pounds for the guys, 65 pounds for the ladies, and chest-to-bar pull-ups. Um, yeah, was it was fun. brutal. It was great. <laughs> so we literally just finished that like an hour ago. Um, so this is a kind of impromptu podcast, but... If we stop to, you know, vomit in the corner, you, just yeah. excuse us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so I wanted to have you on the show because mm-hmm. you started in a traditional Globo gym, correct? And then you, you yeah. made the transition to um, to the CrossFit mm-hmm. space. You want to talk? Well, first off, let's let's give a little background about yourself. Yeah. Um, I mean, do you want me to start from, like, my birth? <laughs> yeah, just a okay. Quick I mean, intro. I mean, I was born in Egypt. I was never really athletic as a kid either. I was born in Egypt, r- normal childhood. Moved to um, California when I was nine. Lived in LA for a little bit. Um, swam for a little bit, but that was just like for fun as a little kid. Tried to enter some teams, but was never really competitive enough. Um, yeah, and then went to high school right here in Dana Hills. Major band nerd. I was in the marching band. That was like as much exercise as I got. Um, time, it's yeah, actually intense camp. because I played the tuba and I was as big as I was. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was fun. And then went to uh, Nashville, did school there, studied biology. Um, it was amazing. And that's where I kind of started to get into fitness. Um, so yeah, I started cool. working for a gym out there just because I wanted to work at a gym I was getting interested in my health and being fit aesthetically I didn't really care about like actual functional movements I just Mm -hmm. wanted to look good at the time I was like 20 um yeah and I immediately fell in love with just connecting with people over fitness so I guess that's just kind of the abridged version of that part and then yeah um managed the gym ended up managing that gym so I did a lot of you know back stuff or scheduling for employees and hiring employees and um was really close to the owners of the gym as well there was like a little franchise um and it was amazing and then uh kind of got a personal training business up and going so that's where i got my certifications to do to be a personal trainer um and as soon as i got my certifications i immediately was really drawn to functional movements even though I kind of heard about CrossFit, but I never did it. I never knew anything about it. Um, But I was drawn to more like squats, deadlifts, pull-ups, like um, gymnastics movement. Like I loved making people do like push-ups and pull-ups, planks, all that kind of stuff. Um, Just getting people out of the comfort of a bench and like a stabilized weight environment. Mm -hmm. Um, Although I would still have them do that because – as a new personal trainer, sometimes you just run out of things to do and you're like, all right, do bicep curls on the machine real quick for like five sets. Cause we yeah. have five minutes left. Um, so yeah. what, what, so being in, in a traditional global gym type space, what kind of made you make that transition? Not, not to CrossFit yet, but to more functional movements, which you don't see a lot in a global gym. Yeah. I, I don't know what it was. I just, 
I I started to be more interested in training for health purposes, even though I went in training for, um, like I said, aesthetic purposes mm-hmm. and just like the physical appearance of just like looking good. Um, but the more I did it, the more I realized I was like my clients, you know, whatever I was doing, sometimes like they would come report back to me that had low, lower blood pressure now and like getting healthier from the inside out. So that was something that really interested me. So I started doing research and, you know, finding out that, you know, thrusters, like I didn't even know they were called thrusters, but I would have people do them. Oh, man. Um, just speaking of, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. probably shouldn't say that word right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I would call them squat presses. Okay. So <laughs> let's just refer to them as that for okay. now. <laughs> Before you um, knew what CrossFit before, was. Yeah, before yeah. I knew what CrossFit was. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, would do research and would find that those kinds of movements were ultimately way better for you than, you know, doing squats on like the Smith machine or right. doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, the w- gym that I worked for, um, they didn't have like the most equipment to work with in regards to functional movements. So I had to get really creative. So that was really fun. Um, but yeah, the more I did it, the more clients I had, which I had a lot, and I was very blessed that way. Um, the more I realized I was drawn more to those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Um, and then eventually we hired a another trainer, a personal trainer. She just needed a job, but she was also um, starting to do CrossFit on the side at another gym. So she introduced me to handstand push-ups. Uh-oh. So those are like the first. And I did them strict Brutal. right away. And it was like, whoa, this is fun. So I would always practice handstand push-ups. Not a fan. Started to get into those. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> um, and then she introduced me to uh, Murph. So mm. Murph was the very first CrossFit workout I did. Rabdo. And Helen was the second. I I would probably say my form on everything was borderline, like, dangerous, but I would do them. And I was like, this is great, but I still never did CrossFit. So before we get into, like, your transition to CrossFit, I mean, we started to a little bit, but what got you into personal training? Because, like, just working at a gym, like, why did you feel the need to help people? Was it just from... Uh, like a financial standpoint or did you find like joy and fulfillment in in helping people reach their goals um it was actually not a financial standpoint so before i became a personal trainer um the owners of my gym they wanted me to manage it so i was a manager for a while and then it was like kind of a newer gym um they were still learning the ropes a little bit and our personal training department was like borderline like non-existent we maybe had like four or five regular clients for one trainer and that was it yeah um so one of the owners came up to me and she was like look i'll pay for your certification i just want another personal trainer and you're already the manager of the gym everybody knows you you have like a great um I guess, report with everyone that comes through the door. Um, So it would be very easy for you to become a personal trainer and kind of build a clientele that way. Um, So I immediately loved the idea because I was, like I said, like from school and studying and all that kind of stuff, I was thinking about being a nurse. Um, And ever since I was a kid, I loved the idea of helping people in any way. Um, And I didn't want to help them when they were already sick, mm-hmm. I would rather prevent them from yeah. being sick. Um, so that immediately caught my attention. I was like, heck yeah, let's do it. I love that. Um, so I studied my you know, personal training certification thing, did the test and started to be a personal trainer. And, you know, immediately whenever all of the people at my gym found out, I had like a full personal training list. So I had to learn really fast, That's awesome. um, which was great. Yeah. So I guess it came from a place of wanting to help people. And the more I did it and the more results I saw, like I said, not just physically, but like not just outward physically, mm-hmm. but more, you know, like healthier Overall hearts health, or like, yeah. yeah, like all that kind of stuff. The more I realized how much I loved it. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So <clears throat> now let's get into your transition from the typical Globo Gym 24-hour yeah. fitness, Planet Fitness space to what we do now. Yeah. So my transition CrossFit. was like – it was it was like a multi-step transition. It was very interesting because when I moved away from Nashville, so the gyms that I worked at in Nashville, they were, it was like a small franchise. It's kind of popular on the East Coast, um, but not like Globo Globo Gym. And then when I moved back to California – 
I was looking for a gym to work at, and in California, all of them are Globo gyms. Mm-hmm. It's very hard to find like that small mom and pa kind of yeah. feel gym. So a Globo gym, I'm not gonna say the name, hired me. They wanted me to, to be one of their like uh, fitness managers or personal training managers, that kind of stuff. And immediately, like from the interview, I was like, this is going to be horrible, but I needed a job. So I was just like, okay. So this was in LA, like in the middle of Hollywood. So just everybody cares about like how much money, like it was all about finances and everybody cared about like how's, how much it's going to cost and like how to make the most money. And that's what they kind of coached me to do. And I hated it because then that just eliminated, um, the, like the personal aspect of personal training that yeah. I loved, you know, the that, that, yeah, the relationships, the connections between people that you make, um, it just turned into a transaction every day and yeah. I sucked at it. Like yeah. I was so bad and I knew deep down, I was like, I know I'm better than this. Um, so I don't think I only lasted like two or three months. Um, I was dating someone at the time and they were going to this boot camp style gym that had a lot of crossfit trainers but they just refused to be affiliated with crossfit Mm -hmm. so i started doing that and i was like this is the kind of stuff i love um but it wasn't like crossfit crossfit they had like boot camp style classes but they just incorporated you know like squat cleans and all the stuff that i just had no idea like snatches i was like what no i'm not gonna even (laughs) try that Uh, i'm gonna do it without a bar and still hurt myself somehow uh yeah so that was in LA, and then eventually I moved back down to Dana Point, and uh, I think for some reason, like I, I like I missed having a community in Nashville. I had like a very close relationship with my friends and like people in the city. We just knew each other. In Southern California, it was just like a little bit harder to establish that. Um, people are still nice, but it just like people kind of keep to themselves a little bit more yeah, than in sure. the South. Oh, man, I love this house. Anyways, um, yeah, so I came down to Dana Point, and I had grown up here, so I felt a little bit more like home being here, but I wanted to establish that community. Now that I'm back as an adult, I'm not in high school anymore, I was just like, okay, time to establish myself. Um, And I already had a taste from, you know, that gym in L.A. of, like, certain CrossFit movements, so I looked up the nearest CrossFit gym, which is like the one gym in Dana Point, CrossFit Dana Point. They're amazing. Shout out. Hey, yo. Um, (laughs) And I went in and uh, one of the head coaches there, Becca, she was my first person I talked with and I immediately like loved her. We became very good friends and just like had a community right away. So I think that was the biggest selling point for me to do CrossFit. Um, what the community, the community. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Huge. It was amazing. And I was just like, this is what I needed. Like moving back from Nashville and like having it, like had so many people in Nashville that I don't have any more out here, my support mm-hmm. system, all that kind of stuff. So I was like, this is awesome. Um, so yeah. So that was like one of my transitions into CrossFit. And then, um, I started to realize that I was like decent at it. I still had a lot to learn. Like it took me about a year to, actually like do a proper snatch um and a proper squat clean but i knew my engine was there my strength was there so that was really motivating as well to um like go into class being like okay i'm gonna scale this but i'm gonna do really well so i'm really excited to be here because for me it was just like how well can i do like what's my limit and how can i get there and how can i push it a little bit every single day to like get to rx yeah exactly Uh, a little side note there is nothing wrong with scaling. So if you're afraid yeah. of mm. of scaling, like if you like let your ego go. Like think of RX as like the black belt. Like you don't just go in to a martial arts gym and say, "Hey, give me a black belt." Like mm-hmm. you got to start from the bottom. Like everybody starts somewhere and then gradually work your way up, right? So yeah. nothing wrong with scaling. Don't be afraid to scale. And that was that was something that I struggled with too. I remember Becca would look at me and she's like, "You are not gonna do RX," and I'm like, "Yeah, I am." And she would just like literally force weight off my bar, and I just like there like, Ugh. it paid off. In the it end, paid right? off so yeah. well. Yeah, coaches so. are usually correct about those things. They've been they've been doing it a while. Exactly. So, what prompted you to get your level one and, and start coaching? Um, I missed training cause I, you know, I joined the CrossFit gym and all that kind of stuff. And it had been about a year and a half now. Um, 
and I just missed missed it so much. Missed coaching, missed interacting with people that way, and you know, being like a positive influence in somebody's life. At least like one person every day in mm-hmm. like one class. As long as I make a difference, that's like all I could ever ask for. Um, so yeah, so I just talked to you know all the coaches, talked to the owner Zach, and he was just like. Yes, absolutely. And like once you get sir like when you pass the level one, like you're gonna work here for sure. So I was like, Okay, cool. Yeah. So it was just more out of just like missing missing it. Sweet. Yeah. All right. So before we get to the next question, I'd like to interrupt this podcast to give a shout out to our sponsors. Oh Slunks. yeah. Slunk Swimwear. Show you my booty. That's his booty. I let me try to stand up. <laughs> yeah, Slunk Swimwear. Um, <laughs> fantastic company. Uh, highly recommend trying their shorts. I don't like shorts with liners. Uh, these shorts have liners, and they are honestly the first pair of liner shorts that I enjoy. Yeah. Super comfortable. They're not compression in any way. Yeah, They're you just can like squat in so them. So awesome. Like, no problem. I work out in them all the time. Um, and yeah, super cool styles, like 90s theme that I have on right now, or 80s, mm-hmm. crazy colors. Uh, they got shirts, tank tops, shorts, hats. They're about to come up with some new styles as well for the summer. Designs. Yeah, so coming that's going to be exciting. Girls swimwear, it's going to be called Slunkinis, so stay tuned <laughs> for that. Uh, all right, bringing it back <clears throat> to the podcast. So you have your level one at this point, uh, and you're still bartending, and you're working out, maintaining a pretty high level of fitness, um, and living a pretty regular and like high performing lifestyle. So you want to talk about how you balance all those things and yeah. still still be able to handle everything? Yeah, it took me. A lot me... of people have trouble with with finding time to go to the gym while, and also a full time job. Mm-hmm. So, um, well, I mean, it took me a very long time to set my pride aside and like learn to listen to my body. So taking it back to like Nashville, there were days where I I've always struggled with overtraining. Like my, my mind has always been very strong in telling me like, don't listen to your body, just do it. I don't know where I got that from. Like nobody told me that when I was growing up, I just like suddenly act like adopted this mentality of like mind over matter all the time. Which is good in some points, but to not really. Yeah, yeah, not really when you're like trying to like maintain like a healthy body. Um, so yeah. So anyways, there would be like days in Nashville where I would wake up, um, go to the gym before having to train my clients and run like five, six miles just to like run. No thanks. Um, yeah, I loved running. One one day I woke up and for the hell of it ran thirteen miles, and I was like, <laughs> okay, oh, no. cool. And then like trained my clients and then five hours later like was lifting weights like nothing was wrong and i never saw progress ever um and during you know my first couple years of of crossfit i was still doing a lot of overtraining and all of a sudden coaches started to notice and they were just like don't do that um so when it comes to like time management i think i've always like put gym as a priority So working, okay, I'm going to take it back now. Like working as a bartender, it's amazing because you have like the entire day usually. I mean, sometimes I'll work like a lunch shift, but you have the entire day from like 9 a.m. to 4 to just do your thing before you go into work. Um, So that's always been, I've always been blessed with that time and I've always found that my, I perform best then. I could, I could see where somebody working from like nine to five, it's very hard for them to, you know, get even like in the morning to find the energy to do it or mm-hmm. like after work, like, oh my God, yep. I did a nine to five once and trying to work out after you're done with work, it just takes so much like energy. And so it's more mental than anything. You're just yep. like, I've been working for eight hours. Like all I want to do is just sit on my couch and like eat ice cream and watch like Netflix or something. Yeah, you um, gotta fight that. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's it took it took a long time for me to find balance where I tell myself like this is your time to train and you need to prioritize rest 
almost more than training. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially living with you, you would yell at me sometimes about <laughs> like, why are you like not sleeping enough? And I'm like, yeah. I'm fine. But then I would never see results. And then yeah. like, as soon as I started like prioritizing sleep over anything else, um, I started to find that I'm getting a lot stronger. I'm getting a lot faster. I'm like happier. Um, and then another really important thing that I learned over the past couple of years is how much it's or how important it is to um, prioritize your time with friends as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Good point. So that's that's like a huge like healing thing for me. I know some people like to recover in different ways. Some people like to recover alone, like just like leave me alone, don't talk to me. Some people recover when they're like around p- other people, just like sitting on a dinner table, mm-hmm. having like good conversation, good food, and just relaxing, you know? Yeah. I'm a little bit of both. Um, but yeah, I just found that prioritizing your relationships as well is so important um, in your recovery. It just like, it recovers you mentally, you know? It prioritizes yeah. like everything. Because if you're just sitting alone recovering, you know, that's fine. But all you think about is like probably, you know, your next meal or your next workout. And like I just feel like you never get out of that headspace of like the gym. Yeah. Whereas like if you're with your friends and you're having a really good time, like you're free of that for a little bit. That Mm -hmm. way, whenever you come back to the gym or whenever you think about training again, it's almost like an exciting thing. Like you you have it. it Yeah. Yeah. You can give it 100 percent. You're not tired of thinking about it. Yeah. Um, so I guess like balancing all of that, you know, I just come with learn like trial and error, learning mm-hmm. how to prioritize, you know, learning that if I bartend until 1 a.m., I'm not going to tell my friends that I'm going to meet them for the 9 a.m. wad, yeah. like not going to do that. And I learn how to say no. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, OK, like I'm going to do the 10 or 11 or open gym or whatever. Yeah. And then you and I could grab lunch afterwards and that will be like our bonding time for mm-hmm. that day. Like it doesn't have to be at the gym. Yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah, I feel no, like I just does. rambled. <laughs> no, that was good. Connection is huge. A lot yeah. of people miss that point. Um, they just train super hard and kind of blow off um, their good friends. But having quality connections is a it's huge so important. part of happiness uh, in your life. Um, and I'm glad you said that about me getting on you about sleep. Yeah, you everything. always need accountability, people. Yep. Yeah. Live the captain's lifestyle. It's part of sleep. <laughs> yep. um, it's a lot of sleep. <laughs> Fittest household in Dana Point. That's why. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> um, cool. So I think we'll wrap it up there. You want to, do you have anything else to say, like closing remarks? I mean, I always have things to say. Um, I hope like anything I said helped anybody, but I mean, the most important thing that I, wa- I would want anybody to take away from this today is just like, you know, learning how to prioritize your time is so important and it doesn't have to be like such a strict regimen but you just need to know how to listen to your body like learn how to say no to things like you're not overextending yourself people respect that you yeah, know if huge. people respect you being like look i need to rest a little bit you know they might give you a hard time being like oh you're so lame whatever but you know nobody will hate you for that yeah. um yeah just and just Knowing your limits, scale, 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 mm-hmm. and then you're going to turn into a monster. Like, you'll be fine. It'll happen. Um, yeah. Stay like, consistent. Learn, yeah. Staying consistent, learning patience, resting, like, love life, like, enjoy it. It's like your body can only go so far, um, but your relationships are there to stay. So, like, you know, you could train as hard as you want in the gym, but make sure you're keeping up with like everything else on the outside and your gym time will like your mental state is going to be so much happier and you perform so much better when you're in that. All right. One other real quick thing. Uh, we both have whoops. Oh right? yeah. It's crazy little wristband. Saving me, dude. Uh, Wade and I talked about this on the last podcast, but do you want to talk a little bit about why you got the whoop and how it yeah. helps you? So I'm on like week two of whoop, um, whoop, 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 whoop. And honestly, I got it because I never knew, you know, like I said, like with bartending and stuff, sometimes I would get like six, seven hours of sleep. Sometimes I get less. Um, and yeah, I never knew just how hard I should push. Like I wanted a little bit more guidance. I wanted a little bit more insight about, what's going on with like my heart rate, with my rest, with my sleep, 
how much energy I'm expending at work because that's like where I work. It's just always busy, always slammed. So for eight hours or so, I'm just running around like a chicken with his head cut off and like sweating and making martinis like every two seconds. And just that's a lot of energy. Um, so I was always just curious about, you know, like where, yeah, like just how my rest is, how, how is my rest? I had no idea, zero clue. And like you could sleep, some people sleep for five hours and they wake up and they feel fine, but their body is not fine. Yep, that's huge. Um, so yeah, that's, that's why I like, you know, you told me about it like months ago when you first got it and it's always been in the back of my head and I was just like, you know, I'm starting to read about it, you know, do my research and I was like, fine, let's try it. And it's been awesome. Like, cool. so helpful. It tells me like, okay, like. 80% recovery, like, okay, I'll go a little hard time today. To yeah, yep. time to time to go crazy. And some days I feel like I did really well on sleep and I'm like 50% recovery. And I'm like, oh, that's strange. But okay, I guess I'll like take it easy. Yep. And it makes the day after that even better. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. All right. Uh, if you guys want to know more about Whoop, uh, you can visit the Whoop website. Or uh, if you'd like to get one, you can send me an email at thecaptainlifestyle at gmail.com and I will send you a code to where I think you get like a month off or something, but let me know. All right. So to close it off, uh, where can people find you? Uh, I mean, I, I Instagram, that's all I do. I don't do Twitter. Yep. <laughs> I don't understand Twitter. Twitter's too political. Um, yeah. Instagram, it's Tornator with two R's. Yeah, you want to T- spell that out? T O R R. Nader, N A D E R, like a tornado. Some some like sweet southern lady in Nashville gave me that name like before I like cared about Instagram. And then she was like, "What's your name, dear?" And I was like, "Nader." She's like, "Oh, like a tornado." And I was wow. like, "Oh, that's so cute. That's going to be my Instagram name forever." There's a story behind that. That's awesome. Yeah, there you uh, go. Also, they can find you at the gym, right? CrossFit yes, Dana Point. Yes, you can find me at CrossFit Dana Point. You want to be trained by trained by a professional here? Come see us, man. It's an amazing place. If you're ever in Orange County visiting or looking for a place to work out mm-hmm. like or wanting to try CrossFit, like highly recommend it. Sweet. Um, take very good care of you there. All right. Well, if you would like to know more about the captain's lifestyle, you can um, look online at thecaptainslifestyle.com or follow me on Instagram at 6 captain morgan 9 And that's it. Don't forget, live the captain's lifestyle. Thanks. Love your life. Bye.